Hi, it's Wesley. Today is the full moon, and we are currently in Boston experiencing a little bit of the edge of Hurricane Henry, so I'm sure that any storm witches up in the area are uh, having quite a time today. <laughs> I am in recovery from a very exciting uh, adventure that I had yesterday at the Watertown Arts Market where I signed up to table and sell my zines, and I decided that uh, almost kind of last minute I decided that I also wanted to offer some free tarot readings, mostly just to give me something to do at the table that wasn't pitching my art, because I kind of hate doing that, and I hate trying to sell to people, and so I thought that offering some tarot readings would just be a nice way to chat and pass the time and help me get some practice with uh, doing tarot readings for other people. I've done tarot readings for myself now for, I don't know, three years or something like that, and um, I've done a few readings for friends and I've done a few readings online um, just over over text, like written readings. And I really want to branch into doing more tarot readings in person, um, just for fun and especially at uh, markets and parks and that sort of thing. And so this felt like just a really good opportunity to uh, debut that. <laughs> so what I wanted to do is now, the day after, make a little video that's talking about how I feel like it went and what my experience was, as this was one of my uh, first major times reading for other people, and re it was my first time reading in this sort of market festival-like context, and definitely my first time doing such rapid-fire readings. Um, yeah, so I guess I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. So just as a little bit of context, um, kind of what this looked like is it was sort of like a farmer's market, but specifically for arts, uh, you know, if you've ever been to an arts market. The tables were, or you know, the booths were pretty spread out compared to most farmer's markets. It was at a really big park and there was just this really nice big loop where we had all the tables spread out and that was to um, maintain social distance and so that was really nice. Um, my table was basically, I had it half set up where I just had all of my zines and things that I was presenting um, on one side so that people could browse them and look them up and whatever, and then I was sitting on the other side where I had a little cloth and I had two little statuettes and just a little bit of um, decor, I suppose you would say. Not that much, really just the statuettes. Um, and I just had a sign that said, tarot readings free or pay what you want. And I really did my best to emphasize the free part of it because I just thought it'd be nice to be able to give people something to do. And, um, I felt like that was sort of a nice debut for me because I'm not a professional tarot reader. And this was really about me getting practice and trying to build my skills and continue and, and sort of start sharing my skills. So I really you know, I felt like this was a good way to do that in a way that kept it casual. As far as how I was doing the readings themselves, they were usually like three card readings. So I think the largest one I did was five, and it was because it was like a two paths thing that just seemed like it would make more sense with five. Um, and I would usually ask if they had a particular theme or something that had been on their mind that they wanted a reading on. I'd ask that in advance just for the sake of choosing what spread to use, but really I wasn't too concerned about spreads. I just kind of had one in mind for the general, um, you know, fallback spread, where I would use one card as a significator for the person, one for their current situation, and then one that's sort of like the future slash advice card. Um, and that worked pretty well for almost everything. And then for questions on relationships, because there were a few of those I just had in mind, like usually I think of it, and you know, including family, just any kind of relationship, I would have like, okay, you have a significator for you, the querent, you have a significator for the other person or other people, and then you have 
a space in between that's sort of representing your relationship or how things are how things how how yeah how the relationship is um and honestly those worked totally fine i don't i was a little nervous that i might need to know a few more spreads like formal spreads a little better <laughs> um not that i was doing a full celtic cross or anything in this context these readings were like five to ten minutes i think the longest one ended up going on for like 15 or 20 minutes just because it kind of seemed like the person needed it, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, like, I don't think that specific spreads were super necessary, and, and this seemed to work out fine, <laughs> which is good. I, um, I used one deck the entire day, um, and the day was, like, 12 to 5 was when the event was going on, and I used one deck for the entire day, which was the... Northern Animal Tarot. Um, I considered bringing multiple decks and then just decided, like, no, I don't want to have to deal with that. I don't want to have to, you know, present this thing to people of, like, you need to make this decision about which deck you want to use. Or, you know, even if I'm trying to do it in a friendly way of saying, like, oh, pick whichever deck is sort of calling to you. It's like, I just, you know, I didn't want to deal with that. And also, I chose this one because I was specifically trying to keep it kid-friendly and make sure that the images would not be too violent or graphic for kids. And that's can be an especial, uh, you know, that can be an issue for, um, like, the Ten of Swords <laughs> specifically and the Three of Swords in many cases. Um, I wanted there to be no nudity. You know, I personally don't have an issue with nudity, and I don't, I feel like I, as a parent, probably wouldn't have an issue with my kids seeing sort of, like, cartoon nudity in the context of a tarot deck, but I just figured, like, better to not invite that in and not have it come up as a problem, like, in the middle of a reading or something. Um, and I wanted a deck that would feel all-inclusive, that would feel appropriate for all ages, and that overall had kind of a more fun, light-hearted <laughs> vibe um, to the art style. And so I think this was actually turned out to be a really good pick. I did this thing where, like, I had narrowed down my choices a little bit, and the reason I was really unsure about this one at first is just because I haven't worked with it as much as I have some other decks, and so I was worried that I would get into a situation where I'm not going to know what to say to this person, <laughs> and I'm going to be sitting here staring at this deck and just, like, awkwardly stumble something out, um, because I'm not familiar with the images or something, but that didn't happen. <laughs> so I think that this worked very intuitively for me, and I just feel like the images of this deck are nice, and they're sort of cartoony, they're, um, they're cute, but not inherently childlike in any way. I liked having the animals. I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to use the, uh, Numinous Tarot for this, but I, which I have on order right now, and so it's, like, in the mail right now, and it just didn't get here soon enough, and I don't think I would have wanted to use it right out of the box for that. I'd probably want to spend a little time with it. Um, so I went for an animal deck because I feel like that is a little more, um, inclusive of, you know, where a lot of people might have an easier time seeing themselves in the cards that way. Um, and just the overall style of it, I feel like even some of the more dramatic cards, if I can find one, like here's the Ten of Swords, you know, it is dramatic. It doesn't hold back exactly, but there's no blood. There's no, like, tortured, pained faces or whatever. And it's still cartoony enough that it's, like, hopefully not freaking people out or anything in this, at this arts market where people just want to hang out and have a good time. Um, so I'm really glad that I went with this deck and I think that it worked supremely well. Um, I did a little interview with some of the decks that I had narrowed it down with, um, the day before, where basically I just asked three questions and for one, if you don't know, I, I do anthropomorphize my decks a lot and 
I feel like it's sort of important symbolically for me. I don't personally believe in a sense of animism of decks where they have their own spirit or soul. I know some people do. I just kind of um, like <laughs> pretending like they're a real person and that's sort of how I can have fun with it and how I can read better and so it's like, eh, it's not hurting anybody. Um, so I was, I did a little interview spread. It was basically just like three cards and I went through this with a couple other decks that I was choosing between. One where I was asking, how am I going to feel reading with this deck? Because I feel like that's kind of, it's not so much about will I be able to read with this deck or how well will I be able to read with this deck? I really wanted it to be like, how am I going to feel? What sort of person am I going to feel like? Because I wanted to be able to keep my energy up and keep my spirits up kind of throughout the whole event. So that was really important for me. I asked, what is the tone of the messages that the uh, querents will receive with this deck? Um, obviously, if it was going to be too serious or too heavy, like, I didn't want to invite that into this context and into this space. And the third one was, how are you, the deck, going to feel at this event? And basically it's like if the deck would feel <laughs> reluctant, or, and I suppose you could interpret that as like if I would have difficulty picking the right cards or interpreting the cards in a certain way, then it's like, well, just, just probably not the best deck to bring. So um, this... The Northern Animal Tarot was basically just shouting at me, like, please give me a chance, I know you're nervous, and I know you haven't worked with me that much, but, like, this is our chance to get to know each other better, and I really, really want to share my wisdom. <laughs> That's basically what I got from the spread, which, um, I don't totally remember what the cards were, I, r I wrote them down, but it's like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I'll do it, and and it worked out really well. So I have a few general observations, I think, about the, um, what it is like to read in this con- in this sort of arts market context. Um, first of all, I was shocked at how willing people were to get intimate and- and personal, um, to me, a stranger, at a tarot market, where it's not like they've specifically been looking for a tarot reader or, you know, trying to find one who fit with them, but people seemed very comfortable where either, you know, they wouldn't always ask the question up front. And this is sort of another observation I had, is that most people would ask for, like, a general reading and didn't have a, you know, they had something in mind but they didn't want to tell me what it was yet, or they just weren't sure about um, how that would affect the reading going forward, or whatever was going through their mind. Like, they had something in their mind, but they were like, okay, I'm just going to ask for a general reading. And then it would come up, and then this the reading would, would like, apply to whatever situation they were thinking about, probably because that is what is on their mind. And so even if you do a general reading, that's sort of what you are going to be subconsciously trying to apply the cards to or see if it kind of matches up with your experience or how it's how you're going right now. Um, and then nine times out of ten, after the reading was over, they would say, so here's what's been bothering me. And it's almost like the reading was acting as this introduction to who I was as a person to, um, you know, help them feel a little more comfortable, know that I wasn't going to judge them, and I, you know, I did my best not to, not to, not to use this position as tarot reader to, to judge the situation, or judge them for being in a situation, but just to be a sense of support. And, um, I just thought, I just thought it was really interesting how it, it acted like a, a like a door of, of, you know, this introduction where now, okay, once you've had this reading, then now they feel comfortable to open up about it. You know, <laughs> I guess that was what felt weird about getting, you know, having the sort of intimacy after it was like, I just want, I, you know, because it, I was it, it, seeing this as like a casual event, I didn't preface it with a bunch of disclaimers about I'm not a mental health professional, I'm not this or that, because 
I felt like as long as I wasn't trying to be a mental health professional, then, you know, there's not really any need to go into all of that for a little five minute fun reading. <laughs> um, so I, <laughs> I still maybe need to work out my position on how much I need, how much I feel like I should disclose beforehand. I don't think that anyone was, was thinking of me as a therapist or mental health professional. Um, I just, you know, which, which is good. I just, that's just one of those things where it's like, I, I, sometimes the intimacy level, I guess I was just surprised at it and I was very honored by it, but also it would sometimes be a little uncomfortable where I felt like it was a little above my pay grade of free, <laughs> you know, it was just above, above my qualifications. So that's something that, I wasn't expecting, and maybe that's something that just a lot of tarot readers deal with, <laughs> you know, um, of having this strange level of intimacy with strangers. So anyway, that was kind of, that was interesting. So the things that I have learned from this event um, is a lot about what went really well and what I would like to continue doing, and then some things that I would like to tweak or that I just need to keep in mind if I ever want to do this sort of thing again. And I had enough fun that I think I do. <laughs> so what went really well, um, preparation was really important and that for most of it being like making sure I was really well rested. I had breakfast and I had water and I had snacks and I basically had everything that I needed right there with me because <laughs> I did not have a chance to get up. I was honestly not expecting the arts market to be this busy. This was the first annual, so there was also not really a good indication of how many people would be there. But what I was expecting is that people would like walk around and they'd sort of glance over at the table and they'd wave and then they'd keep going. And that occasionally I might have someone who comes over and I say like, hi, would you like a tarot reading? And they just kind of sit down. But, um, there were a lot more people I think than expected and I, and people were a lot more interested in this than I expected. And so I was basically reading just about nonstop with literally like two 30 second breaks in which I could text somebody like for the entire event, which, um, what, like, I feel like the reason that that worked out as well as it did was because I was prepared enough that I, I still had enough energy to do that. And, um, you know, I had my water and I had my snacks and I just knew that I wouldn't need anything. And so there wasn't, you know, I wasn't feeling like I was pushing myself too hard, but I think that if I hadn't been so kind of like, uh, <laughs> paranoid about trying to make sure that I, I had packed everything I could possibly need, then you know, that may not have gone as well because I did need a lot of those things. So I guess, you know, it's kind of an old adage, an old Boy Scout thing of like, be prepared and just bring more than you think you'll need. Um, really, I think it's just about, um, I can see how this could be an, a difficult place to enforce boundaries. So if you are considering doing like a market thing, just um, I personally would have a really difficult time enforcing boundaries or enforcing breaks in between readings. And so I was not anticipating this, but I was prepared for having like uh, just a ton of people coming through and I, you know, having basically like people who would kind of hang around and wait until I was free and then come over. Um, and so that worked out okay, but, like, that is what this context, it, it supports. That is the sort of thing that is so, like, it is not well suited for breaks. It is not well suited if reading tarot is, um, very emotionally draining for you as a reader. It is not, like, <laughs> it's really hard to take breaks. If you, if you need to have that time in between, um... I think that what might work well would be like a tag team where you have 
a friend who also, or like another tarot reader where you can switch off each time so that you can take the break while the other person is reading, or just have some specific scheduled breaks in your uh, time where it's like, okay, at two o'clock I am taking a half hour break and... I am enforcing that no matter what, no matter if people are waiting, when it starts to get up to close to two o'clock, telling people in advance, I'm taking a break at two, come back at 2.30 or whatever. Like, if you are going to try to enforce some sort of break or some sort of boundary like that, it, it's going to be difficult. And that's something that you need to plan for ahead of time. I guess that's what I'd say. Other things... It was a little loud, which could be a little distracting at times. It, you know, that's just the nature of doing this outside, and it, it wasn't all that bad. Um, and also because I was the only person at my table, like, a lot of times people who didn't really know what was going on would kind of come up to the table while I'm doing a reading and try to ask me questions or try to ask me, oh, hey, what you doing? while I'm talking to somebody, which is like, I understand that this might be a good idea to bring another person if that's going to be especially distracting. Like, I feel like I was, I was able to just say like, you know, I'm doing some tarot readings. If you want, I can read yours next and just do something to imply that it's like, okay, I'm kind of busy right now, but thank you very much for your interest. Um, and it wasn't a really big deal, and, and it worked out fine, but if you're, <laughs> you know, if that's something you're concerned about, definitely bring another person who can kind of act as the, um, the manager, I guess, of people, <laughs> or, or asking questions while you're busy. So there were a few things that went really well that I definitely want to continue doing. One of these is using a card to represent the person. I call it a significator, although it wasn't like specifically searching for I'm going to use the Page of Wands as my significator and pulling it out and doing that, but you know, allowing them to select a card from the deck randomly that would ultimately represent them in the reading. And I think that that provided a really nice base because people like compliments and part of trying to keep this a nice fun casual reading thing was having a significator as a way of springboarding you know what sorts of things to compliment them on and what sorts of things they're good at and so you know if I pulled the page of wands and I'd be able to say okay well you're a very curious and creative person who has interest in a variety of things and is ready to take on adventures. And it's like, that's great. Everyone loves to hear that about themselves. Um, <laughs> so do it. I, um, I didn't end up having any sort of like traditionally uncomfortable cards come up as a significator. Um, except the devil. I suppose that came up, but that wasn't so bad. And I told the, I, at that point it just sort of is a, as a way of putting their mind at ease and kind of empathizing with them. It's like, you know, when I pulled, <laughs> when I was working with this deck, then when I pulled what the deck saw me as, and it called me the devil. And at first I'm like, rude. <laughs> and, you know, just trying to keep it a little more jovial atmosphere before explaining that. Well, what the, what I see the devil about is about, uh, boundaries like Capricorn basically, cause it's associated with Capricorn. So anyway, um, <laughs> just, Having something to start the reading off on a nice, happy, light, positive note, even if then we had to get into some deeper stuff. I had someone pull, like, the Wheel of Fortune, the Three of Swords, and it was, like, a really dramatic reading. But just having that nice little anchor of giving them something to compliment them on and something to sort of return to was nice, and I think that helped keep the atmosphere more appropriate for this uh, more lighthearted, casual festival setting. So that worked really well. Totally want to keep doing that. The other thing that I liked was um, I liked to be able to share a little bit of tarot structure with them. I didn't go into the whole, sh whole spiel with everybody, but sort of like when it became relevant, use this knowledge of tarot structure to give them some more context, not just me telling them this is what it means, but as a way of, of like helping to educate 
them about tarot a little bit, and maybe that's just like a librarian thing, but for example, when uh, I had a lot of threes that showed up uh, while I was reading for people, and the way that I like to see the minor arcana is to see them in these little loops of three, where, you know, one is the beginning, two is the middle, and three is the conclusion, and then it starts over with four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, and ten is a whole other thing. <laughs> and so that was sort of a nice way, I think, to engage them in the process of what it is like to read tarot cards and um, just help not only to share my personal interpretation of things, but also to, I mean, I, I suppose even looking at the structure in that way is my personal interpretation, but, you know, just to be able to share a little more about what tarot means and, um, you know, I was just really trying to look for ways to make it more engaging of more of a back and forth as opposed to, I'm just going to, you know, tell you what I think of you and your life for 10 minutes. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So, so just incorporating little things like that or saying like, okay, so if the tower came up, then um, we can take a look back at the devil and say, okay, if the devil's about boundaries and about recognizing current habits that you're in, then the tower is about cutting off that which no longer serves you and enforcing certain boundaries. And so that's just, you know, having those little connections, I think was really nice. I think that people liked it. I don't know, most people were pretty quiet as I was doing the reading. Um, but yeah, I just, I really liked doing that and I'd like to, con to be able to continue doing that. Um, and then the last thing that I think worked out really well was as sort of a conclusion statement, rather than saying something like, um, was this accurate for you, or did this resonate with you, or otherwise asking them to analyze the reading itself, I tried to ask, how do you feel? <laughs> because that way, I feel like it sort of preserves their privacy a little more, and it doesn't ask that anything of them, um, you know, it's not asking, you know, because if, if I'm asking, like, was that accurate for you, then people are going to be worried about, like, well, I don't want to hurt your feelings as a tarot reader, especially since you're doing this for free and you're just doing, like, this nice thing, um, or maybe it was really accurate, but I just don't want to be betray that, there were a few people who, you know, they were just very polite and nodded, but clearly they were a little more private. Many people were more intimate, as I mentioned, but, you know, there were people who were not interested in sharing that many details about themselves, and so asking, like, okay, so all of the stuff that I just <laughs> laid out for you, like, was that accurate? I feel like it's just, it's just a little bit of invasion of privacy, and so I didn't want to do that, but I just feel like it's a good way of at that point, they can share as much or as little as they want, um, where they can say, like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling good, thanks very much, or they can, you know, just give, like, a very polite, you know, I'm good, thank you, or, you know, if they wanted to say, like, wow, that really, that really hurts, then they have the opportunity to say that. Um, so I really like that as a conclusion, and I think I'm going to continue doing that. <laughs> I just, I think it worked well. And the last thing that I think made for a really great little ending, and um, I'm definitely going to continue encouraging people to do this, is to offer to let them take a picture of the tarot reading, or for me to take a picture of it and send it to them. Um, <laughs> because I think a lot of people sort of have in their mind this idea of tarot being a little more mystical and far away and like sacred or sanctified than it actually needs be. You know, it's not like a fine art piece where you can't take flash photography or something like, oh, take a picture. This is your reading. It's for you. And so just having, I feel like that also ended it on a little bit more of a lighthearted note where even saying, how do you feel? You know, that can be a little difficult where it's not always going to be a happy thing, but just saying like, would you like to take a picture of this? you know, it's almost like taking a little step back into the mundane and into reality <laughs> about like, here, pull out your phone and take a picture. <laughs> and, you know, it's just something I feel like more people were comfortable with doing. 
And I think a lot of people were afraid to ask that sort of thing, but or even didn't think of it themselves. But when I gave them the offer, and when I gave them the opportunity, it's like, oh, yeah, that would be really great. And they and, you know, people were very happy to be able to do that. Um, yeah, so I definitely want to keep doing that. I, I would, I hope to be able to do this again. And if you are curious about trying to start doing readings in person, I think this is a really great way to a great way to go with it. Um, and a great way to get some practice in and, um, have a very casual, fun setting that can still be very meaningful and impactful both to you and to the, um, you know, the querents. So yeah, I, uh, can't wait to do it again. <laughs> See you later. Bye.